Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make a really quick little card or painting, and we are going to make a Christmas kissing ball type theme here. Just gonna find something circular to draw a circle. I'm drawing this darker than I want you to, but I want you to be able to see it. And then we're just gonna sketch on a little bow. So to draw a bow, what you wanna do is start off with kind of a rounded square shape, okay? Then we're gonna put a um, kind of like a, uh, I don't know what to call that, like a, it's a bow shape <laughs> on each side. Just kind of like, it's also kind of like a rounded triangle kind of on either side. And then we're just gonna add an oval at the top of the rounded triangle just to give the inside. And then we're going to give it some, uh, some like hanging little tails. Okay, now keep in mind, you can use regular pencil. I'm using a call erase color pencil and I'm drawing it darker so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now in addition to that, um, I'm gonna put a couple tails off the bottom because that's how I like to do um, my kissing balls when I make them in real life. So I'm gonna throw that in the bottom. I also think it fills out the card and balances things really well. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a round brush and I've got a number eight round here. You can use whatever you want. We can, you could do one type of foliage or you can do two types of foliage. If you want to do like a, um, oh, like a, a needle, like a pine needle, you probably would want a fan brush. Uh, but if you just want to do like a boxwood or a mistletoe leaf, then you'll just need a round brush. Um, and you can mix both of them if you want to. That's totally fine. So I'm going to start off with some kind of like a, almost like an olive green color. And I'm giving these Paul Rubens paints another go. Um, I originally was not that impressed with them, but I had only used them um, dry. So what I'm doing is just like little two little dabs, but I, I only use them wet right from the tube. But I generally prefer uh, prefer using my paint, like drying them out, and then working with them. I just feel like I get a much better uh, a much better result and also I get to see if they're gonna crack I get to see how much binder how much humectant they have in them and I just get an overall better feel for for the type of paints that I have I'm gonna kind of scooch in a little bit close to the bow here and fill that in a little bit now um, if you are gonna paint this and not let everything dry you will want to leave a gap where your bow is but if you can spare a few minutes let things dry you won't need to do that Again, just mixing the olive green and the viridian. You can use whatever greens you like. And whatever brush you have. Just a, just a number eight, number six round. Anything that's comfortable for you to handle. And I just wanna make sure I do leave some spaces here and there for some berries. Uh, I think I might even add a little bit of um, like a Prussian blue in my green, just to give me another shade that's a little bit darker. I just think that looks nice. I don't even think I want to put the, um, I don't think I want to put any fur in this kissing ball. I really like it kind of dense like that. I think that's pretty. Okay, I did get a little sloppy there, but I think my red paint's gonna cover that just fine. And I'm just gonna quickly dry this with my heat tool, but again, you can let it air dry, or you could um, take your chances and go in there when it's wet, but I really think that um, you have less chance of things blurring and just a neater look if you go ahead and, and dry it really quick. You can see it doesn't take any time with a little heat tool or a hair dryer to do that. And um, I'm really not seeing that much chalkiness here working from the paints dry so uh, that's that's a good that's a good sign I do get a little bit of a shift that's typical with watercolor I do notice I get more of a shift when I'm working with student watercolor versus um, professional watercolor it's kind of nature of the beast okay so now what I'm gonna do is throw some berries in and I'm gonna use a q-tip for that just a regular old q-tip cotton swab and I've already got some red on my palette but I think I will need a little bit more so I'm just I dip my, my Q-tip in water, dipped it in the pan, got a little 
just kind of soaked it up so I had kind of like a stamp pad almost. And I'm going to do little berries here. them wherever you can fit them. I just try to balance it out. If you're going on the edge you can do a little side berry like that. All right and then you can use whatever brush you like. Sometimes using a flat brush is a little bit easier for doing ribbons. Um, it just depends on what size you have and how comfortable you are using it. Let's see, this is a half inch. It probably is the biggest you'd want to go for a card sized bow here. But a round brush works just fine. I'm going to tuck that right up in there because I got that gap. I think that would look kind of pretty. And if you do want to know how to make a real kissing ball, I do have a video on my YouTube channel that you can check out from a couple of years ago. Um, they're so fun to make and they're, um, they're easier than wreaths. They don't take as much uh, supplies as wreaths either, which is nice. I guess it would be a little bit bigger. Feel free to turn your paper so that you're comfortable when you're working on this. There you go. Gonna get the... Uh, if your space is a little bit narrower than your brush, just kind of turn it a little bit. Go a kitty corner. And it's very simple, very easy. This would be cute on a tag or bookmark, anything like that. Um, if you do like this style of painting, I do have a course that's all about painting um, flowers and flower arrangements called um, Watercolor Flower Workshop. And also I have a mini course that's for doing Christmas cards that you might be interested in as well. I am gonna do the inside of that bowl a little bit darker. I'm gonna go back to my round brush and I'm going to take a little bit of that Prussian blue that I had mixed with the, um, the green, but I'm going to take it, mix it with a little bit of the red to get my shadow color. It'd be kind of like a wine, I'll end up with it being kind of a wine color. And I'm just going to paint this spot inside. I'm going to leave a little gap where the front of the bow is still wet. That will give us a little definition as well. The nice thing about the color erase pencils is they don't do a wax resist, meaning they don't, um, I'm adding some shadow on this area here, they don't, like, repel the watercolor paint. Oops, getting a little, I'm not used to this brush, it has longer bristles than the typical number eight that I use. A little, uh, shadow on one of these tails here, the one in back, for a little dimension. And there we go. I think that's really pretty. Oh, you know what we should do? We should also add a hanging loop or just at least a string ribbon. Please excuse my scratching cat in the background. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but she's like scratching all over the place. And there you have it, quick and easy and fun. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, happy creating!